Welcome back to another video by the Energy Fabricator. Today we're looking at the polarization of these carbon fiber HHO electrodes. Uh, if you want to know a bit more about these, skip back a few videos. Um, now, when I think polarization in electrical circuits, I'm generally thinking diodes. So, um, the best way to check the polarization of these plates is to use them as a diode in a circuit and um, see how they perform. So let's do that. Put them in the water, otherwise we're not going to get anything happening. Now, the circuit that I want to use is a full wave bridge rectifier. Pretty simple circuit. Everyone knows what these are. AC comes in here and you get DC out here. Now, a good safety precaution before I explain this test circuit to you um, is to leave your safety glasses in front of your power supply switch. That way you'll never forget to put them on before you turn the power on. Okay, um, AC power coming out in the yellow leads that you can see there, uh, set to 12 volts. Those leads going over to a full wave bridge rectifier. Uh, we've also got the fluke multimeter here so that we can measure the current coming into the circuit. Um, we've got the red and the black leads coming out of the positive and negative DC output and they are going straight to our 12 volt 100 milliamp load. Uh, I've also got the oscilloscope probe attached to the positive and negative of the terminals and they are going straight to our DSO203 oscilloscope. So if we turn the power on now and we turn our multimeter over to amps we can see that it is pretty much 100 milliamps of current being drawn by the globe simple and there is our waveform you can see this blue line here is the um, the zero voltage point so there is a small negative voltage proportion to this waveform but it is you know 95 percent positive Now we're going to take it one step further and I have got these HHO electrodes actually producing HHO by merely connecting them these white leads parallel to this diode here. So it's one lead's on that end, the other lead is on this end of the diode. So parallel to this diode, it's like having two diodes in parallel and as you can see we're producing a very small amount of gas but gas none, nonetheless and current draw has increased by 40 milliamps We're up to 140 milliamps but as you can see one thing I did notice the difference in this waveform is that all of it is above the zero voltage there is no negative component anymore I'll disconnect this uh, white lead here and you'll see the change in the um, in the waveform disconnected you can see it drops below zero slightly and when I reconnect it there it will jump straight back up so there you go that is a um, that is a diode as you can see now the um, diode that we were bridging our HHO electrodes with in parallel um, has been removed. There it is there. And the only thing we have in place of that diode now acting as the diode is the um, HHO electrodes. So as you can see if we get in there a bit closer we are producing HHO uh, we are producing a bit more than what we were before 
but we don't have much of an increase in current um, as compared to having the system parallel with a diode. So um, 40 milliamps going into the HHO electrodes and 100 milliamps going into the light globe. The difference without the diode and just having the HHO electrodes uh, in place of the diode is this waveform here. Now the only way I can explain this waveform is that on every second pulse the HHO electrodes are actually using a bit of that energy to, um, to do work in converting the, uh, the water into gas, um, leaving the other pulses in between, the, the higher peaks, um, untouched and fully rectified. So now we have the same waveform set to 2 volts per division and we're going to try and smooth this out to a um, proper DC instead of a pulse DC. So what I have here is a 35 volt 100 microfarad cap. We're going to connect that across the output and um, see what sort of voltage we get out of that. connected now and as you can see closer to a DC but not quite so we'll take that off and instead we're going to try a 5600 microfarad 40 volt cap pretty big and we're connecting that now and we should see a change now there is our new DC. As you can see by this new waveform that has been smoothed by our 5600 microfarad 40 volt cap, um, the ripple voltage is less than a volt now. We're probably looking at um, you know three quarters of a volt of ripple voltage. So that's pretty acceptable by most people's standards, depending on the application. Um, definitely, definitely good enough for a um, for a little 12 volt light. Okay now so far we have created a full wave bridge rectifier uh, using only three diodes. The other diode has been removed from here. We have the HHO electrode assembly in place of the fourth diode producing gas as you can see. The output is powering our 100 milliamp light globe. We have further smoothed the direct current, uh, the pulse DC, into a more steady direct current using that cap, and that is the product of our efforts. Now, what I would like to do is to see if we can increase the gas production for free and the way I'm going to test that is by putting this resistor across the load, across the output, across the DC so it is a 6 watt 39 ohm resistor um, I've chosen this one because my diodes here are 1N4007 uh, although they are 1000 volt diodes they're only rated to about 1 amp um, so this resistor should take us up pretty close to that. Uh, so let's connect that now. And just make a note by the way that um, current draw on the system from the AC side of things is um, 250 milliamps now. 260. That jumped straight up as soon as we added that uh, smoothing capacitor onto the circuit. Um, so just remember that 260 milliamps, 250. So let's connect this resistor, green leads, one on the black terminal and one on the red terminal.
you can see our current's jumped up to about 850 milliamps now which is just below our threshold of one amp and let's focus in on the gas production it does seem to be slightly higher it's moving a bit faster what I'm going to do now is disconnect the resistor and see if it slows down now with a small load remembering that it's not costing us anything shouldn't be costing us anything to produce more gas because it only requires 40 milliamps to produce this effect the fact that we're adding a load to the DC should just mean that there's more current flowing through this diode here so let's disconnect the additional load of the resistor and see what happens to the gas production if anything disconnected now now this is gas production without the additional load so we're still on 250 260 milliamps and connecting the additional load now so theoretically we should get an increase in production definitely sounds a bit more bubbly looks like they're um, all the bubbles are coming out a bit faster so I'm pretty confident that we are getting an increase in gas and my guess is that it would be for free definitely looks a bit faster I'll now take the resistor off again and see if there's much of a difference and we'll put it back on now I believe there is an increase it is only ever so slight but there is an increase I guess the next step to test this theory would be to put it under a um, a load with more current we'll need some new diodes so just going back to our original test um, based on our 12 volt input and um, the power consumption by our light globe of 100 milliamps and the additional load of 40 milliamps by the HHO electrodes we can calculate the power used to provide the HHO or produce the HHO I should say is 0 0.48 watts so that's less than half a watt of power going in to produce HHO now if we can succeed in increasing the amount of HHO produced by just increasing the load on the um, on the DC that means that if we can find a circuit that has a high DC current usage um, we should be able to produce a significant amount of HHO for free as a function of its um, of its job as a byproduct really of it working as a diode underwater we will be doing more work on this um, that's about all I've got for you at the moment I'll have to get a high current diode assembly together and um, get a high current transformer and try and do a few more tests just before I forget I've got here in this little pink container a 
teaspoon of baking soda. Right now we're still at 850 milliamps. Light's still going. Everything's still working. Still producing HHO. Now let's just see what happens to the current draw when we um, add the baking soda. I'll add say half of it for the moment roughly. And yeah, we'll just give that a bit of a bit of a stir. Current draw's gone up to nine hundred and ten milliamps. And gas production has definitely increased. Yeah, let's just pour the rest of it in. Here we go. Mix that in. Over an amp now, so I won't run this for too long. 1.15, 1.16 1 amps. But, as you can see, definitely got gas production here. And an increase of it. So with a teaspoon of baking soda, we're drawing 1.2 amps, which is more than what we should be running through these diodes, but unless we have a significant increase in um, HHO, we're going to have to do this again with some high current circuits, should be pretty cool, yeah, thanks for watching.